Hello everyone. Welcome to the lab three of EC five seven three Advanced Embedded Logic Design Winter twenty twenty two semester. In this lab, we will discuss the implementation of eight point a fifty on the hardware that is your FPJ using the DMA that is the direct memory access. In the theory lectures, we have discussed about the AXI stream, AXI light, AXI memory map, and the interconversion between them. So we will use those concept here. Then we will also discuss about the how to use the integrated logic analyzer so that we can capture the signal from the chip. So we can capture the on chip signal in the real time, and we can display it on our Vivado analyzer, okay? So that we will know what is happening in the chip. And if there is a debugging needs to be done, we can do it using the analyzer. So it is a very powerful um, uh, unit to debug the signal once you implement your design on the hardware. Okay, so uh, the 8.50 code, uh, in the previous lab, we implemented on the PS, that is the ARM processor and we calculated the execution time. In this case, we are going to implement on the PL, that is the FPJ. We will calculate the execution time and we'll see the difference between the execution time of the PS and PL, okay? So what are the topics we are going to learn? We are going to learn how to use any IP in the FPJ, that is Vivado, which is the free IP. Uh, we will use, uh, we'll see how to use the DMA IP in the uh, uh, Vivado. Then we will discuss about the FPJ design flow because in the last couple of lab, we were focused on the PS. So we didn't use the FPJ, but now in this lab, we will use PS plus PL. So we need to know how to configure the FPJ, how to generate the hardware files for the FPJ. So we'll learn about the FPJ design flow. Then we will uh, configure the DMA using the software application on the ARM so that the data can be sent to the DMA and then to the F50, and then the process data from the F50 can be read back via DMA to the memory. And then we will discuss how to use the ILA for the debugging. Okay, so in our, uh, uh, the main uh, lab looks like this. So this is our uh, chip where we have the uh, PS, then we have the PL here. On the PS, we are going to use the uh, core zero. This is the UART, which we are going to use. So we are going to use the UART. Uh, we are going to use the external memory, which is the DDR memory, where our application code will be there. Now inside the core zero, we are going to implement the uh, PS FFT, so that will run on the hardware. Then we will have also the on-chip memory also, OCM, where you can copy the data which is to be passed on the hardware FFT and the receive the process data from the hardware FFT. So we will have the hardware FFT. Now this hardware FFT will have the stream interface. So to convert the uh, memory map to stream because processor can also only talk in the memory map interface. So to convert the memory map to the stream, we will need the DMA. So this DMA will uh, read the data from the memory and will write the data, process data to the memory. And this DMA is configured via the processor. So this is the configuration port, which can be the AXA light port. And this is the memory map port. So this is the light port. Uh, these are the memory map port. Then this DMA will forward the data to the F50 and then receive the data from the F50 process data via stream interface, okay? So this is how our lab looks like. Then in our lab, uh, you can extend the lab to do the larger size F50 and study the effect on the execution time. So here in the larger size F50, you can do the up to, you can do a 256.1024 and so on. Now, as we know that we have in the previous lab, we calculated the PS execution time for the F50. Now in the PL execution time, there will be two component. One component is to 
communicate the data to FFT IP and the FFT uh, processing time on the hardware. Okay, so this is the plus this, this is the PL education time. Now this communication of data happens via AXI protocol. So that will have some significant um, overhead. And this FFT is done on the hardware. So you can do the parallelization on the hardware. But we also need to remember that the PS operate at 666.66 uh, .66 megahertz, while this PL operates at 100 megahertz. So these are all these factors we need to take care of while looking at the execution time. But uh, you will see that for 8.50, we may not get the significant execution time. But if we go for the higher size of 50, we will get the significant execution time. So uh, compared to the uh, previous lab, as we know that, uh, so we are going, this time we are going to use the uh, PS as well as PS. In this case, we are going to still use the UART. Here, we are going to use the DDR, so no change in this part. Here, we will use the FFT on the hardware. Then we will use the DMA from the PL. There is a DMA, uh, here is also there is a DMA, which is called as a PSDMA, but we are not going to use this PSDMA. We are going to use this DMA hardware. Then we are. you can see that there are multiple AXI ports are there. Uh, here, so out of which we are going to use the two port. One is the general purpose port, that is the GP port, which is used to configure the DMA, that is the via AXI light. And then we are going to use one port, which is the uh, this port, which is the ACP port, which is used to read or write the data to be processed by the FFT. So this is what we are going to use. Uh, design flow. In the first two labs, we use only the software design flow, but this time we are going to use the software as well as the hardware design flow and the corresponding integration. So it's a complete design flow we are going to study in the Zinc lab uh, today. Okay. So to revise what we are going to do, we are going to do the FFT acceleration on the by using the FPJ. So this is our uh, uh, PS, this is our PL. Uh, we are going to use the core zero. Then in this case, we will use the FFT for the PS and there will be a, some memory where the data to the input to the FFT and output to the FFT will be there. In addition, we'll have the uh, DMA, we'll have the FFT. This is uh, the stream interface then you can connect to the memory so you can read the data and this core zero will do the configuration via the light interface this will be the memory mapped interface and so on okay so this is what uh, we are going to do so one thing we need to understand from the uh, processor perspective you can see that from the processor we just need to do Two, uh, two to three things. We just need to look at the DMA. We need to configure the DMA so that the DMA is activated. Second thing is we need to uh, ask the DMA to send data to FFT. And we need to ask the DMA to receive data, which is the process data from FFT, okay? So because processor is a memory mapped one, it can only see the DMA, it cannot see the FFT because FFT is a stream protocol. So these are the tasks we need to do, okay? And uh, you, this configuration, uh, this all the things are done via the AXI light protocol. This is the, this is the interface which will be used to do the uh, all this configuration and uh, request to the DMA. So DMA is nothing but the co-processor to the main processor. It will help the processor to uh, read the data and send it to the FFT and re or read the process data from the FFT and send it back to the memory. So the processor doesn't need to do the memory copy operation that is taken care by the DMA. 
Okay, so this is uh, the overall scope. Uh, in the handout, uh, we have shared all the step-by-step -step processor procedure, how to do the uh, uh, all the configuration. You can look at uh, all these steps, or you can look look at the next few videos if you want to know how each steps are done. So uh, you can see here uh, in the in this case, you can see that we have, uh, this is my, uh, sorry. So here you can see that uh, this is my PS part. Now this PS part will configure the DMA via AXI light port. And this AXI light port, you can see that this GP port where the PS is a master, it is used to configure the AXI uh, DMA via this interface, okay? Now, why we need the interface? I'll discuss in the lecture. Uh, you need to have the AXI3 to AXI4 conversion. Then you need to have the clock con uh, conversion because both are operating at the different clocks. For that, we need a AXI interconnect here. Then you can see that the, this AXI DMA is reading the data. There is a memory here. This data, or it can be a DDR memory. Any data can be read either this ACP port uh, via this ACP port, which is the accelerator coherency port, and this uh, DMA via using this two port. You can see that this is the MAXI memory map port. Means here, AXI DMA is a master and these are the memory map port. AXI DMA via this interconnect can read the data and as well as it can write the data on this particular memory. Now, what is remaining is that we need to connect this stream protocol stream interface to the corresponding streaming IP. So we are going to use the FFT, we are going to use the 8.50. So in the 8.50, you can see that uh, I have connected the uh, AXI data, which is the input to the FFT, to the, out, the output stream of the DMA, and the output of the FFT, which is the process data, is connected to the input of the uh, FFT. So this is needs to be done uh, there. And then there is a AXI configuration uh, port for the FFT. So for the time being, for the temporary thing, I have uh, used the constant um, blocks to configure the FFT. Here I am making it one constant one so that it can do the FFT operation. If it is make it zero, it will do the IFFT operation. And this is the valid signal is one so that the uh, FFT gets the configuration data. So after uh, all this connection, we are also done the uh, ILA. So what we need to do, whatever the uh, links we need to observe, we add the debug uh, property on that. And then after we do the run connection automation, you will see that the system ILA is uh, uh, added. It is the integrated uh, logic analyzer. And all these five signals, what are these five signals? Uh, AXI light then uh, and the AXI uh, four ports on the DMA, two ports to the FFT, two ports to the memory. All these five signals are being captured by the ILA and you can display it, okay? After you generate it, you need to follow the steps to the uh, create the uh, appropriate block diagram. Then in the SDK, we will start with our uh, original lab two port, which is the, uh, 8.50 in that lab two code, what we are going to do, we are going to add the steps for the uh, DMA configuration, then uh, data transfer via DMA from the FFT to the, uh, from the DMA to the FFT, as well as the, so this is the DMA uh, to FFT. And the second thing is the FFT to DMA. So that is need to be done. And then we will find out the execution time. Okay, these are the steps we need to do it. So this is the code. Uh, these are the changes need to be made. I'm not adding the entire code. You can look into the next video for those things. Okay, so this is the simple how to drive, write the driver function that also we will discuss. And this is the uh, configuration of the DMA. This is the communication with the uh, DMA uh, via PS. And uh, this is the uh, comparison of the PS output and the PL output, making sure that both are correct if there is a, a match or not. Okay, so this completes the overview of our lab.
and in the next few video we will discuss each and every step in more detail